Hello children, welcome back to the class. Uh, so as we were uh, doing reproduction, okay, so today our topic is sexual reproduction. So sexual reproduction, now uh, the first topic 8.31 is why the sexual mode of reproduction. Now children, in the very introduction I told you why sexual reproduction, okay, and uh, we also talked about mitosis and meiosis. Now here I talked about DNA. Now I hope you know that the full form of DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid. Okay, deoxyribonucleic acid. Now little of uh, elaboration. L little of elaboration of that. Okay, when I talk about sexual mode of reproduction, now here I said that meiosis has to take place in the gametic cells. Suppose meiosis does not take place, then what happens? Okay, we'll have twin chromosomes. Okay, uh, like if suppose the uh, sperm from the male gamete, okay, so here this is a uh, 2n and then we have the egg also containing 2n number of chromosomes, okay. Now this 2n and 2n comes out to be 4n, so doubling, that is mitosis if meiosis does not take place and the baby which will be born will be with 4n number of chromosomes, while in the parent individuals we have 2n number of chromosomes. So in order to maintain the chromosome number, okay, and I told you that DNA and chromosome number uh, they normally go hand in hand. So this chromosome number, the halving of the chromosome number has to be done, okay, during the formation of gametes. So that is why when we talk about sexual mode of reproduction, we see the variations also, okay. And sexual reproduction brings about variation, that is what. And uh, how is this variation helpful? Yes, when we see the, the asexual reproduction, we see complete the photocopies. The offsprings are photocopies of the parents. Means they are complete clones. Now here when we see sexual reproduction, yes, there are variations. Now are the variations useful or uh, they are just like that? Yeah, they are useful. You must have seen children, mosquitoes. Now earlier when we were the okay? So you would see that all the mosquitoes would uh, run off from your house. But these days when you have this, uh, the same tortoise kachwa, okay. So what happens? The mosquitoes keep loitering about or sometimes they will raise up to a little height, okay. And af as soon as it is over, that burning agarbatti, that is over. So finally again they come back. So they develop a resistant gene towards that, okay. And that is what is variation. So variation helps you to fight against the changing environment. It uh, also helps in your survival. So survival of the fittest, we will study in the other chapters, okay, what Darwin said. So this supports that, variation supports that, okay, and they have a longevity in their life as well. So that is why sexual reproduction is more favored over a sexual reproduction. Next we come to sexual reproduction in flowering plants. Yes children, when we talk about a flower, okay, so what are the different walls in a flower? We have sepals, we have sepals, we have petals, we have stamens and we have carpels. Okay? So sepals are the green uh, parts of the flower which are uh, just outside, outside the petals. Sepals and petals are the colourful ones which uh, attract the insects, the other organisms towards it and helps in pollination. Then we talk about stamens. Stamen is the male reproductive part in a flower. Do remember it, male. I always put this arrow for male. Children, please have it in your mind. And carpel is for female. So this is the female reproductive part. This is the male reproductive part. Petals normally are concerned with pollination. And sepals, because they are green in color, in the bud stage, they help in protection and also carries out photosynthesis because it is green in color. So these are the four walls in a uh, flower. So when we talk about, when we talk about the flower, Okay, so let's talk about sepals and petals, you know. Let me talk about the stamen. So when we talk about the stamen, okay, so this is what? These are, these two are the anther lobes. Okay, this is the connective and this is the filament. So this is normally a stamen. This is the male reproductive part of a flower. Now this has pollen grains into that. Okay, with this I'm going to rub off this part. This is the uh, male part of the flower. While the female part of the flower, I'm going to draw this side. Just pay attention. Female part of the flower, when we talk about stigma 
top part. Okay, this is the style and this is the opening. Now here we have this is stigma. This is style and this is the opening. Okay, so what happens? What is pollination when we talk about transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma? Now, children, you very well know that this anther is present in the male reproductive organ. Okay, so these are the two anther lobes and they are connected with the connective. So, and the anther lobes has pollen grains. So, these transfer of these pollen grains, so when the favorable condition returns or whenever the condition is favorable, when it is mature, what happens? This wall, the outside wall bursts. Okay, releasing the pollen grains. Now, these pollen grains with the help of different pollinating agents, maybe air, wind, water, insects, whatever it is. So, this is again carried from there to here. So, finally, the stigma comes over here. And, uh, sorry, the pollen grain comes to the stigma. And the germination of this pollen grain starts. Okay, by the time, let me draw over here. These are the antipodals. These are the synergids. Synergids. And these two, two, these are the polar nuclei. Okay. So finally what happens? This, it grows. The germination of that takes place. Finally it comes over here. And this has two cells. Okay? So two male nuclei. So finally it comes over here. So one of the male nuclei fuses with the polar nuclei and the other fuses with the egg. The egg is here. So this is egg and these two are polar nuclei. So one of it fuses with this. Now this children, we mark it with a different thing. Here you see this, this coming over here. Okay, so finally it enters, so one comes and enters with the egg nuclei, the other one comes and enters over here. So finally this forms the zygote. And this one, this, this forms the endosperm. Got it? So finally what happens when we talk about the fertilization? Fertilization is fusion of one of the male gametes with the egg. The egg which is present in the embryo sac, okay, fusion of one of the male gametes with the egg is said to be fertilization, okay. When we talk about double fertilization, one, two male nuclei we have, one fuses with the egg, the other one fuses with the polar nuclei. So when both the fusion takes place together, it means when the formation of zygote and formation of endosperm takes place, it is known as double fertilization. Means when the fertilization takes place twice in the same embryo sac, once with the egg and the second time with the polar nuclei, it is known as double fertilization. One more thing children, what is triploid fusion? It is related with it, I will tell you, maybe not in the book. So what is triploid fusion? Now triploid fusion is the same one as the formation of endosperm. Uh, when we talk about this, okay, the polar nuclei, these polar nuclei has n number of chromosomes, this one also has n number and this, the male nuclei also has n number of chromosomes. Here the egg has n number of chromosomes and this. So zygote has 2n number of chromosomes and when we talk about this, complete endosperm has 3n number of chromosomes. So fusion of endosperm with the help of two ends polar nuclei and one n of the male nuclei gives rise to three n endosperm and this is what is known as triploid fusion. Hope it's very very clear. Please see the diagram in your text. Go through it and see it. You have sexual reproduction in your uh, text 8.3. Okay. So the sexual mode of reproduction, uh, the flowering plant and then you have this. Yes, there is another. When we talk about the germination, let me complete that also. When we talk about germination, there is no space left. So, you can take any seed. Okay? Let me take chana, if you remember. Okay, so this grows here and this one grows up with small leaves. With small leaves. So, this is known as plumule. This is known as radical and this is the cotyledon. This is germination.
So hope it's very very clear to you all. Okay, go through the video quite many times. You'll understand. If you have any doubts, I'm always there. Do ask me, and I'll reply to you. Thank you. Thank you.